So now we're going to uh, take a look at the second part of the function, the exponential term here. And uh, we'll, similar to what we did in the last video, we will um, make a vector which has the function evaluated at all the x points, well, at that part of the function. So we'll say this one, this half of it is y2, and that's the exponential of a bunch of stuff. Uh, which are Lorentzians, which you've seen me type out before. And so uh, here it is. Um, as you can see, there are some element wise operators that I put in. Uh, I didn't use the dot divide, I used dot to the minus one. Um, same thing. So anyway, so let's, uh, let's evaluate that. We'll plot, uh, we'll plot y2 as well, so x and y2. Uh, so uh, control enter okay and as you see since I put a figure command now I actually have two figure windows running figure one and and figure two are both on my desktop and uh, so here's the exponential term and so uh, when we multiply them together this exponential term goes to one at the edges and almost one in the middle and then dips around the side so we expect that our Lorentzian rules would be have some dips over here and there Okay, so if I want to, if I have been doing cell mode for a while and opening a bunch of new figures, I might want to close them without having to click on them all uh, individually. And you can use the close all command, and that will close all your windows. And if you do a clear all command, that's a similar thing that will clear all the variables, and you'll see they'll all disappear from our workspace. There we go. Um, that can be useful if you're working on a few cells and you sloppily um, mislabel some variables that are the same in both cells. If you clear all, you'll suddenly realize that you've done something stupid. Um, anyways, uh, let's multiply y1 and y2 together. Uh, so for the result, this will plot as a function of x and we'll do um, y1 times y2, but we want it to do element-wise. We want the first element of y1 to be multiplied by the first element of y2 because those are the both the things that are um, evaluated at x equals minus 10, right? So we have x dot times y2 and uh, control enter. Okay, there we go. Now we can add some um, some some line specifications to that, uh, just to fancy up our plot a bit. Um, uh, if you want to know how to um, how to make your lines or markers fancier, type doc line spec, and you'll get a help window that will show you all the symbols that are uh, that that will denote. Uh, what types of lines there are like there's dashed lines dotted lines dash dot lines all that kind of stuff so um, You can also choose a marker type like if you have data so all the data points will be will be um, denoted by markers and uh, the lines will connect the markers uh, in that style there are also color specifiers and uh, the way to use this is uh, if you plot x y and then right after each x y pair you put a line specifier thing and you just sort of group all the things that you want together so uh, this is the dash dot symbol um, the uh, the zeros uh, the circular marks are on the data points and uh, ours are, are uh, red um, so let's go back here uh, let's say the first one I just I don't care about the color it'll probably plot it blue but I want them dotted same thing here, I'll put them dotted. And here, let's say it's a black line. And then um, there's also uh, some stuff you can do with line width. So you might want to look up um, these extra kinds of specifiers that you can put in. Um, you can put them in at the, uh, at the end of, of the uh, arguments. And uh, you'll see in the next video, I'll tell you what this dot 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 means. Um, or, well, it essentially means this line is continuing down here um, in the function. But um, 
you can put uh, all kinds of other line specifiers uh, in there. So I'll just show you a line width and uh, we'll, we'll put two. So there you go. There's our function. The black, black one is the final function and the other two are the pieces of it. Okay, so um, let's put a legend in there. Uh, that's a legend command. Uh, the legend command takes in um, the, uh, the number of strings that correspond to the number of data sets that you've plotted. So in this case, we want three. So the first data set that we plotted was uh, y1. And that's the Lorentzian term. Uh, y2. Oops. Uh, y2 is the uh, exponential term. And this is the result. Um, and then control enter. There you go. Um, now there's a, um, if you want to add in uh, special characters um, to the uh, to the legend, you can do that um, using uh, LaTeX light like commands. That's uh, that's L A T E X, um, and LaTeX commands are also um, recognized in Word. Uh, but anyway, if you if you there are things like you know squared or um, or, or pi, and uh, and it will it will interpret the backslash as this is the Greek letter, pi, or psi, and then and then an underscore will put a subscript. Anyway, here's just an example, and so I've got all these kind of uh, LaTeX-like characters. Um, and uh, finally, yeah, that works in Word too. It's kind of neat for e editing equation. Alt equals makes an equation. Alt equals, uh, and then uh, and then so for example, I could do um, y equals e uh, to the uh, two, and then say if I want a subscript of pi, um, and then as soon as I press the space bar, these things start rendering one command at a time. So you sp press spacebar a couple times after the commands and it will render them. Um, you can also do fractions, but that's sort of more obvious. Um, so 1 over x to the 2 plus a quarter. There you go. Um, so anyway, uh, the equation editor in Word is pretty great, so I like to recommend it. Okay, uh, that's all for now.